Hi, everybody. Patty Ann here again. Welcome back. Today, I have something really super fun to show you, and I think you're going to want to make these for the kids in your family or other people, too. I'm going to show you places where you can get backgrounds like this for free that go on the card. Also, this was free, and I'll see if it still is a free download for you. In addition to that, I'm going to show you where you can get some of these riddles that I've used on the back. And you're wondering, what is she talking about riddles? Well, first of all, check this out. This is a double-sided. I printed both sides of this card at the same, basically at the same time, one after the other. And I'll show you that in a minute. But what's cool about this is it says, who's the penguin's favorite aunt? Well, this was one of those scratch off stickers and I was able to scratch it off to find out the answer to that one. So I have some other ones here too. Here's one and this one says, how does a penguin build its house? So these are all about penguins since that's what's pictured on the front. And by the way, I colored all of these on my computer using my Silhouette software. I highly recommend you get that software. It's on sale right now, a one-time fee of $48. Use my link down below. You'll be so thrilled that you got it. I promise you. Anyway, so you can make more and more of these gift tags or whatever you'd like to use them for. I've seen people even use this kind of a scratch-off thing for a baby shower reveal or something like that. But here's another one. Where does a penguin keep its money? Hmm. And the final one, what's a penguin's favorite salad? But anyway, this part right here is the scratch-off sticker. Now, I happen to get mine from Silhouette. Sometimes you can find it right now, and sometimes it's a little bit harder to find. It comes in different colors. It comes in the silvery color, uh, I think maybe white and gold. But you can also just get regular shaped stickers, scratch-off stickers that you can buy, and they don't have to be anything fa fancy. You could buy them anywhere and just have certain shape ones that you would make your image fit within that shape. I'll show you in just a minute. Let's go check out my page up there, or my uh, desktop on my computer. And by the way, here's one that I kind of quickly colored with a pencil, watercolor pencil. Messed him up a little bit, but he's another one too. Where does the penguin keep his money? Well, he keeps it, of course, in the snowbank. L-O-L. <laughs> anyway, join me up there at my screen, and let's get started. Okay, here we are in Silhouette. I'm using Silhouette Business Edition because I have it. I highly recommend you get it. It's on sale right now. Use my coup my link down below. You'll get it for $48, a one-time fee. You will love it whether you're using a Cricut machine or a Cameo or a portrait as I use. Anyway, I have my machine set up for the page set up for Auto Portrait. Portrait is my cutting mat, 8 by 12 Notice that's a lot bigger than what you can cut with the Joy, the Cricut Joy. That's why I like this one. Uh, the letter size is my media size, 8 and a half by 11. So I'm going to leave it like that, and I'm going to have it in portrait mode. I can put on my print and cut borders if I want. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the draw drawing tools, and I'm going to get the rounded rectangle. I'm going to click on that, and I'm just going to draw out a rectangle any size because I'm going to resize it now. And when I resize it, I'm going to make it 3 inches wide. So I'll come up here and make this a 3 and hit Enter. And I'm going to make it 4 and a quarter inches tall. 4.25 inches tall, just like that. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this because I actually want four of them. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down my Alt key and make another one here. And then what I think I'll do is I'll grab both of these and just align them to the bottom so they're the same. And then what I'm going to do is I think I'll just group them temporarily and I'm going to duplicate them below. So if I want to, I can hold down my Alt key and drag them. Or I can come over here to the Duplicate panel and just say Duplicate Below. 
So there we go. And I'm going to use my arrow key to bring that down a little bit so there's a little space in between. So that's perfect just like that. I can group these together now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and grab this and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to open up a new page. So I'm working on Untitled 8 and Untitled 9. I'm going to right click and say Paste. The other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this lines up exactly with the other one. So I'm going to say Center to Page. So I'm going to have this selected and Center to Page, just like that. And I want it to stay there. Do the same thing with this one. Highlight that, Center to Page. And now they are exactly lined up because I'm going to print these back to back and they're going to line up perfectly. Now this first one here, I'm going to put the registration marks on it because it's going to be my print then cut page. So I come up here to the page setup and I'll get the third button over right here. And right now the registration marks are off. <clears throat> I'm going to change it so they're on just like that. Perfect. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is this is going to be the front of my card. And as I said, I got a pattern from Michaels that I'm using for free. So let me show you where those are now. Okay, here's Michael's free digital design library. And I'll have it linked for you down below so you don't have to try to remember this um, long address. So here are the things that you can have, and it says they're going to add new designs regularly, so you might want to save some of these. Um, really some cute ones in here. The one that I downloaded was this one right here for the holiday, the silver and snow snowflake pattern. So I downloaded that. As you can see, it's downloading right down here. It doesn't even come zipped. It's just a regular JPEG that'll be in my downloads. Then there's some more text. There's the deer. Lots of cute stuff. I think I'll do this one. And look at the gnome. Cute. Let's see what else do I want. Maybe I'll take this one. And... That's probably enough for right now. So I've downloaded those. Those are the free files, as I said, that I have. The other file that I got was the free one, and I'll show you that now. Okay, I wasn't able to find the other uh, little penguin that I used. Uh, I didn't look for a really long time because I didn't want to spend my whole day doing that. But you can see that the uh, image was by Coney or Connie Fong. You can see that right up here. I have it in the Google search, C-O-N-I-E-F-O-N-G. She has a Etsy shop and Etsy shop. You might find what you're looking for there, but she has super cute things and she does have them for free sometimes, but I just don't know for sure that where that one is that I got for free. So anyway, I'll just use mine and you can just imagine you can use any digital sticker you want or digital stamp, I should say. So let's continue on. Okay, the next thing I did was I typed in Google Penguin Jokes for Kids. And the very first one that popped up from EnchantedLearning.com had some really cute ones. So I just went down here and I picked some of these out of here, and the penguin jokes. So I don't know, there might be a, let's check and see, maybe we can do, um, Hmm. Mouse <laughs> or maybe bear jokes for kids. Bear jo in the same place comes up first. So this is perfect. So I'll have a link for this website down below for you as well. So you can easily find what do you call a grizzly bear caught in the rain? A drizzly bear. Ha ha ha. Anyway, let's continue on creating our gift tags. Okay, as you'll recall in the beginning, I showed you how to make the Untitled 8, which is going to be the front of the card or the tag, and then Untitled 9, which is going to be the part with the joke and the scratch off sticker. So let's go back to Untitled 8. The first thing that I'm going to do, I guess, is I'll just come over here to the Shape tool, go to the Ellipse, click on it, 
hold down my shift key and make a circle. Since I'm holding down my shift key, it's going to make a perfect circle for me just like that. So I'll drag this one over here and put it into place. Just hold down my Alt key, drag another one onto this one. Hold down my Alt, drag another one down here. Come on, there you go. Okay, and hold down my Alt, and see how it changes from a hand to a plus? That means I'm duplicate. Whoops, that meant I was duplicating it. Okay, there we go. Drag this right down here. Gotta move my mouse. Okay, that looks pretty good just like that. So now we have the four holes, but I need to make them holes. So to do so, I'm just gonna click on this one, hold down my Shift key, click on the tag behind it, or all of the tags, come over here to the Modify panel and say Subtract. And that subtracted it right out. Hold down the Shift, grab that one, Subtract. Click on the circle, hold down Shift, click on the card, say Subtract. Click on the circle, hold down Shift, click on the tag, and then with my Modify panel open from over here, remember, I'll just say Subtract. So those are all done now just like that. I don't need to do anything with the back of the card, nor do I need any kind of registration marks, because this is going to be cut out when these are cut out. So now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and put that background on here. So let's go to File and Merge, because I want it to come right into this same page. Okay, for some reason my merge isn't working right now, so I'm going to do Control, Shift, and O. So Control, Shift, and O. <clears throat> Oopsie, wait. Control, Shift, and O. And that opened it. And remember, I downloaded that uh, paper that I wanted right here. So I'm just going to say OK. It comes in huge like this. I could, if I want to, click on it and lock this lock and change one of these dimensions so that it makes it much smaller. And now what I'm going to do is something you may or may not have done before. I'm going to click on one of these, come over here to this eyedropper, which is the Properties dropper, and then click on this. And that puts it right in there where I need it to be. Click on this, Properties dropper, and that. This, Properties dropper, this, properties dropper and this. So there we have those all ready to go. And I might as well just go ahead and right click on this one and say copy because I'm going to need it in the back side of these cards as well. So I'm going to click Untitled 9 to open that. Then I'll right click and say paste that colored paper right here. So now all I have to do is the same thing I had done before. Hmm. I don't know, I've clicked, I've uh, grouped these, so let's see what happens if I try it when they're grouped. Okay, it worked perfectly. So there we go. Alrighty, let's go back again to Untitled 8, because this is the front. I can get rid of this piece now. This is the front, and we'll remember that because this is where the holes are being cut. So what I want to do is I want to bring in that little image that I had. So I'm going to go to File and Merge, and remember that wasn't working right. So I'm going to do Control Shift O, and I'm going to look for that same little pers little uh, thing that I had done before. Okay, here's the little penguin, and I brought it in. As you can see, there's a little white box behind it, which I don't want back there because it'll mess up the way my backing looks. So I am just going to go ahead and uh, come over here to the little tool that looks like a piece of toast. It's the Trace panel. I'll say Select the Trace area, Trace around that. I'll probably up my threshold so I have nice, good lines, and then just say Trace. Now, on mine, what I did, I can move this out of the way, I don't really need it, was I went ahead and made this a color, and this is a little bit more advanced for those of you who are new. You could just print this out with this on top, or you could just turn this 
Yeah, that's what I would do. Probably on top like that. And not have a backing at all. But this is what I'm going to teach you today. So what I do when I'm making this into something I can color, the first thing I do is click on the outermost edge of it, change it to a color I'm not going to use by coming up here in the upper left hand corner. I'll change it to a color I'm probably not going to use. Let's scroll in so we can see more clearly with the tool that looks like a bug to me. So you can see I've changed that into a color I'm probably not going to be using, right? Uh, then the next thing I do after I change it to that color, I come up here to where it says Object, and I release the Compound Path. And what that's going to do, it's going to change every one of these little pieces that make up my penguin into little squares so that I can color them individually. Right now, you'll notice if I try to color something, they're all hooked together, and I can't ungroup because that's not an option. So I can click on this, come up here to Object, and release the Compound Path. And look what it does. It puts, whoops, let me go back so you can see, it puts little boxes around everything, which means I can color every single one of those little things. So let's say we'll start with the hat. And, you know, I can make it a solid color if I want to by coming over here and I'll make it red. And I'll make the bow this part of the bow. I'm holding down my shift key and grabbing everything as I go. I'll make that red as well. Uh, let's see. Now this is an advanced topic too and we're not going to get into it today. See how there's this opening right here? I can't fill in this part of its um, background of the, the, the bluish color or whatever color I'm going to make it because it'll sneak right out into her face. So I don't want to worry about that today. This is for an adva more advanced class. Today all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and make her face. Let's see, what did I do before? I made it white, I believe. Yeah. So I'll just come up here and change that color to white. Now her little face is white, and I made all of these parts that went around her, I made it a gray gradient. Okay, so to make it a gradient where it goes from one color to another, whether it's a solid, I mean a single color or more, you just come up here to this paint palette, grab the second one over that says fill gradient, and then you're given all kind of options of gradients that you can use. Well, I think I just used a light one like that to make mine. Could go darker if I want to. I'll go darker like that. Okay, and then all, of course you could go to advanced options here if you wanted to when you have that. Whoopsie. Let's see, control Z. I'm hitting control Z to put that back to where it was. Now with the gradient still selected, of course I could change it a little bit by moving these or putting in more little boxes here to make it darker or lighter. I also could change the rote, the angle of the gradient by going here. And I think I'll just leave it like that. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do then is I guess I will color in her little feet and I held down my shift key and got the second one. And then I just made that a solid color so I could just make it a gray. This is another part of her body that should have been colored in with that gradient. Since I forgot to do it, what I can easily do, just come over here to this properties dropper and grab this and it'll change it into those same colors I had been using. All right, let's see. Let's make her scarf. Um, should I just make it shades of red? Am I using too much red? Well, this is just a champ sample to show you what you can do. So I guess I'll just make it red. All right. So I'll come over here and make it red. If I want to make sure I get it the exact same color, I can click there. And I missed a couple, so I can choose that. There we go. Okay. The Whoops, I missed one more. Okay. The... Um, present, I can make that any color I'd like to as well. Could even make it a, a pattern if I wanted to. To make it a pattern, you would come over here to the same paint palette, go to this little pattern 
area and then just scroll down and see what kind of patterns you have in here. Uh, now if you're going to be using this in Cricut Design Space, these patterns won't show up over there. You'll have to choose your own patterns over there in Design Space. But if you're going to be just printing this here, I kind of like that. That'll be cute. Okay. If you're just going to use print it here and do a print and cut with silhouette, whether it be your cameo or your portrait, you know, it'll work fine. So the next thing I'm going to do is I guess I'll do her hat. So I can hold down the shift key and grab all these little uh, pieces. Might have gotten them all. I could make it that same green as the present if I wanted to match that. And again, I could go ahead and change this to something else. Take this white. Can use either one of these paint areas. Hmm, maybe I should make Well, you know what I'm going to do now so I can get a better idea of what it's going to look like? I'm going to click way outside of here and try to get a box that goes around everything. I got it. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes check that out. It's just a small box. I want to start clicking up above it until I get the box that covers everything. And notice, I know I have that color selected, the outermost color, because it shows up here. I want to change it to black now so we can see what it's going to look like. Okay. I think her scarf looks rather boring, so I'm going to change that. And this little piece here, I'm going to click on that piece, hold down my shift key, grab the piece beside it, and then say subtract. And that'll make the black show up. So let me show you more closely on these pieces over here. Click on this piece, hold down my shift key, select this green behind it, and then say modify. That's the Modify panel, and Subtract. Okay, click, Shift, click, Modify, Subtract. All right, so there's a little funky piece right here, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to drag that right out of there and just delete it, delete on my keyboard. Scroll out just a little bit. Okay. So some of these pieces didn't turn black the way I would have wanted them to. So to change those to black, it would be the same process we just followed. Click it, shift, click the color behind it, come over to the modify panel, and then say subtract. Click this color, shift, click the color behind it, modify, subtract. Click. Shift, click, modify, subtract. And now I'm going to click on this piece, hold down my shift key, click on this piece because I don't want his little beak or her little beak to be that color. I want it to be a kind of an orangey color. So I'll just make it orange like that. Okay, let's scroll back out and see how we're doing. I think I might like this to be a little bit uh, with the gradient. So to grab the exact same gradient I won't have down here, I could just get that little properties dropper and click. And okay, I don't really like how that turned out, but I can come back up here. Let's see. To the gradient fill and the advanced options and get rid of that. Uh, maybe change the angle. Well, hang on just a second. I'll be right back. My sister's calling. Okay, yeah, so that was Jean Frieda. For those of you who remember Jean Frieda's challenges from last year. Anyway, we're back to the little tassel on his hat. And I'm going to try to change its color a little bit. But I'm not sure what's happening here. Let's see. Huh. I wanted to make that a gradient, and it was supposed to be like this, but maybe I need to change the angle. Okay, I'm not exactly sure why that's not working right, so I'm just going to change that to a white color instead, 
and just leave it at that and move it back over here. Okay, there we go. Okay, he's pretty much done except for a few little bits down here. You can see that I need to do the subtract method to make it so that the black shows through in the back. So I'm going to click on a couple of these at once. Click on this one, hold down my shift key and click on actually all of these I could probably get. And then also while my shift key is still held down, click on the color behind that and then come over to the modify panel and say subtract and that perfect. So I'll do it on this one as well. Click, shift, keep holding down my shift. Don't let go of it. Still holding down my shift key, click on the color behind, come to the modify panel, and then say subtract. All right, so that looks really, really good. Let's scroll out. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to group all of him together. Group. And um, like I said, I don't know if I really like the, the all the red in his scarf, but I'll just leave it like that for now. Um, let's see, I gotta scroll out some more. So I've gotta make him so he's gonna fit over here on this and it fits perfectly like that. Now, I don't know if you can notice or not, but there's these red lines that are showing up in here. Those won't show up when I print it. Those are just the cut lines. If that little bit of redness that you can barely see, Let's see if I scroll in if you can see it more clearly. Yeah, you can see kind of the red lines. If that bothers you, you can just come up here. This is the line color. Change it to transparent like that. Then it doesn't show up at all. So we have one of our little penguins done. If I want to, I can click on him, hold down my Alt key, and drag one over here. Now the other thing I might want to do is change the color of this one if I don't want them all the same color. An easy way to do that is to just come up here to this paint palette on the right. No, I'm sorry, to this little thing that looks like a half moon, the effects panel. Then come to the second button over, which says colorize, and it's the hue. If I change that, look what it's doing to the colors of my penguin's hat and present. It's changing them. So I could change them like this, just by that doing that. Okay, if I want to, I could drag another one, hold down my Alt and drag another one over here. If I ungroup this first, and now I come up here to the color hue. I've got to grab it all again. Come up here to the hue. I thought it was going to change his scarf too, but apparently not. Well, again, we can just change this a little bit to get some different colors in here. Um, there we go, some purpley, a little bit more purpley looking. Group all this together and bring it down here. And let's see, let's make one more. I'll alt and drag one off. And hmm, I wish I had made a scarf. Like I keep saying different colors. So maybe I can do that right now. Let's scroll in so we can see what's happening. Maybe I want to make his scarf some of these some other colors. So let's go up here and do it. I'll make it like, make it green and green. Hold down my shift key and grab a bunch of these. And change those all to green. And change these to green. Okay, this one's not going to work right, right here. Because there's a little tiny opening there. Let me show you. If we scroll in here. If I try to color this green, just this part right here, the green is going to sneak. Imagine it's like watercolor liquid. It's going to sneak right out of there because there's no dam to close that off. So it's going to be able to sneak right out. So I'm not going to be able to change those to different colors. But I can change this one to green. And I can change this one to green. If I change this one to green, it's going to change both parts. Watch. See? But we'll just leave it like that for now. All right, let's scroll back out and see what we have. And maybe I'll change this to a different pattern. Uh, maybe I'll come up here 
and change its pattern to something else. Hey, maybe I want to be checks. Hmm. Just looking around just to see what there is available. So maybe I want to use that check. I could have actually just made his uh, scarf the same by clicking there. See, I could make his scarf like that. Hold down my shift and get all the green pieces. And then just come here and change them all to that. Then maybe I'd change this to something else. Hmm, like that. Maybe change the hat, this part up here, to this. And maybe all of this to red. I'm just playing around just to see what I like. Change all of this to red. Not black, red. There we go. Alright, so we could have it changed like that if we want to. Oop, I missed one right here. So I'll just get the top properties dropper again and click so that's pretty cute like that all right so i could leave him like this if i like him or i could group him all together and drag another one over and let's just see what happens if i go to the hue here second one nope uh, I, the one that looks like a half moon and the second one over then i can change this and we can see we can get a few different colors in there doesn't look that different. Okay, there we go. A purpley one and a green one. Let's scroll out. So I'll just bring this guy right over in here. And since these two look a lot alike, let's see. Ah, I'll just leave them like that and delete this one. Okay, so we are ready to go basically now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come up here to File and Print. It's going to print my registration marks. And I'll say Print. And of course I could put names on here. Another thing I thought might be kind of fun on this is to put a name on the front and on the back there could be different ones spaced throughout the room or throughout the house and they could have little um, scavenger hunt stuff on it or that kind of thing where it says go look under the couch and then under the couch maybe you find another one of these and it says look behind the bookcase or look in the 10th book from the left in the bookcase or something like that you know just to have somebody have to follow all these steps to get to their present I think that'd be kind of fun anyway I would change the preferences of this to high and say print and it's going to print it along with the registration marks when that is done printing I'm going to put the paper back in my printer and this time I'm going to print this on the back and it's going to fit perfectly okay before I can print this side though I do have to put the text on here so I went ahead and got one of the riddles and I'm just gonna paste it here it comes in huge so I'm gonna click on it and make it smaller by using one of these boxes and just smoosh it in and then when I'm making it smaller and this is really a lengthy one but I'm gonna double click on it to get this little bar so I can move it in like this and let's see, will that fit? Let's see. Whoopsie. Oh, no, I can't move that. Remember, you must not ever move that. Those. If you move that, it's not going to line up. Oh, gosh, I did it again. Okay, let's get this. Just, just drag this. All right, so that's not quite going to fit just like that. So I'm going to move it in a little bit more. And if I want to, I could stretch it down. Now, and I'm going to come over here and change the font because I like this font since this is for kids. Let's see, recently used. Oh, I don't have it here. So I'll use Moonchild Sands. And so now I can make this bigger. I'll make it black. 
And so what do you call 50 penguins at the North Pole? And I'm going to come in here and get there. And after the question, I like to leave enter, enter a space. And on these, they have a parenthesis around the beginning and the end of this answer. I'm going to get rid of those. So that's all I need right there. What do you call 50 penguins at the North Pole? Really lost, because penguins live in the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> all right, let's go get some of those other ones I've already done. So let's see, it's not them, there they are. So let's see. So you see how to do those now. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. And now I'm gonna ungroup it. And move these things out. So I'm just gonna copy these, copy. And I'm just doing this to save time so you don't have to watch me do all of this. I'll get rid of that one. I'm going to paste. And then I can move these up onto here so that they're ready to go. And so now I'll go ahead and print it. And I'll meet you back here. Okay, I've printed everything. The last thing I'm going to do is remove the text. Whoopsie. How about this? How about I move the boxes? I need these boxes now because these are going to go on. Okay, that one's hooked together and that one is too. So I'm going to have to ungroup because all I need now is the box. Ungroup. All I need is this box. Ungroup. <laughs> all right. So those are the boxes I'm going to need. I'm going to make those out of the sticker paper. So I'm going to go ahead and put them right up at the top like this. Okay, so now that everything's printed, what I'm going to do is put this on my mat with these pictures showing up on my mat, making sure it's lined on there nicely. And I know you're not seeing this, but I'll show you when it's cut what happens. So I'm going to put this on my mat carefully. And I'll just go ahead and say send. And it looks like it's going to cut all of these little pieces, which I don't want. So I'm going to grab all of this stuff and tell it to just cut the edge. That's all I want it to cut is the edge. So now it's just going to cut around the edge of the card and the little holes that we made. So I'll stick this in my machine, load it in and pressed send. So it's reading the registration marks. Okay, they're all done being cut out. I can just take this off here carefully. Let me turn my mat. Here they are, double-sided. You can see there's this side. And then when you flip it, oh, and these little holes should come out too because that's where my little string is going to go. Okay, so there's this side. And then, of course, when your person turns it over, they'll see the other side with the riddle. But, of course, the scratch sticker is not on here yet. So we're going to make those right now. So look back up at my screen up here, and I'll show you how we do that. So remember, we saved those four little boxes that were going around the text. So all I need to do now is to cut those out of the... Um, material, the silhouette material that actually looks like this. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut this top part off. I should probably be using my cutter to make it straight, but just cut this top part off like that. Throw that in the trash. Get my mat back out and put this on my mat. 
to cut out the last pieces that we need. So I'm going to go to cut. Okay, they've all been cut out and they're ready to put onto my little stickers, little labels. Okay, so I'll just take them out and place them right over top like that and press them down and that one's ready to go. Let's see which one's smaller now. Probably this one. Okay. And this one I accidentally did my test cut on it, so I'm going to have to try to get some of that test cut stuff out. Let's see, this must go here. Gonna have to get my little square that's up here. I didn't mean to test it right there. Let's see if I can do this pretty well. Part of my triangle. All right, well, that didn't work that great, but we get the idea. <laughs> okay, so there's that. And then the last one is this one right here. So again, you don't have to buy this special sticker paper. You can make whatever it is on your card fit under the size label you get because you can get all different kinds of labels online. I'll have a couple of links for you down below where you can get these on Amazon and that kind of thing. But uh, I think they're super cute. What a cute way to label gifts. And as I said on some of these ones in the beginning, I'd actually put names on them. And I think that'd be super cute. And they can go over and do the scratch off. Again, there's so many uses you could do for these. They don't have to be for Christmas. They could be for a baby shower reveal. Uh, each one of these could have something different on the back. Like it'll tell you to a, a little riddle and then say, go look under the couch or something like that. Or you have to click something. I don't know. You guys are creative. Let me know in the comments below a way that you think that you could use these scratch off stickers. That would be really super fun for this holiday especially, but at any time really. So I hope you like this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the little bell so you're notified when I go live. Remember, these are digital stamps. I love using them. I have lots of videos showing how to use those. Also, check out my links down below. I have lots of good sales going on down there. And you want to make sure that you get the Silhouette Business Edition if you don't have it because it's a terrific price right now. It's $48. When I bought mine, it was $99. So thanks again for joining me. See you all soon. Bye.